This was the most anticipated Fed meeting since the Fed started increasing rates in this cycle. The markets have been begging and pleading with the Fed for a new round of easing even as stocks hit record highs. Unfortunately, this may not have been enough. The markets really wanted 50 basis points, but they committed to further rate cuts so they won't have to wait long. This was widely expected and now a pivotal point in the cycle has has been achieved. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to cover exactly what happened during the Federal Reserve meeting. I looked at the data, I went into the actual statement, I watched a press conference after, I had all the details for you in this video. I'm going to do a second video getting into other types of detail. I'm going to show you all the information you need to know, so let's get into it right away. Fed cuts rate by a quarter point, cites global developments, muted inflation, you know all of this. I'm going to show you some of the mainstream news. I'm going to get into the actual statement itself. I'm going to look at the projections and the details. Let's move on from this. I know you've already seen a lot of that, so I don't want to bore you. The two words from Jerome Powell that rocked the financial markets, mid-cycle adjustment. That's it. That's why people started to freak out. They looked at the data and they said, we are now presented with a moment in which we can cut the rates. We have an excuse to cut rates, and this would actually be beneficial to the market. The economy is going to love it, and everybody is going to absolutely cheer for us. However, that didn't work out in the way that they had hoped. The markets right now are looking at this as a problem because they use the word mid-cycle adjustment. That created an issue for the Federal Reserve because they were thinking this was now the beginning of a new cutting cycle. They don't want to admit to that, of course. We know that that's probably the case. But the Federal Reserve is saying that, well, you know, what happens in the future, we can't really tell. And so at this time, at this moment, we looked at the data and a 25 basis point cut was the most appropriate thing. Two people voted against that action, but ultimately they went ahead and did so. This was widely expected to happen. It wasn't really a surprise. The question was 25 basis points or 50 basis points and it looked like 25 was more likely and that's exactly what happened here. When you look at what the Federal Reserve does, always take it with a grain of salt because you don't necessarily know what's going to happen in the future. That's part of the problem that happened today. They were unsure, the investors and the press were basically unsure what the future has in store with the Federal Reserve. And there was a repeated statement over and over and over again. We are data dependent. We look at the information that is provided at that moment and then we make our decision. We're not necessarily going to say that we're going to print more in the future, but this here just shows you what they are willing to do. They are willing to cut if necessary. So they tried to make this seem as if we're strong, we're tough, the dollar is good, the economy is good. However, we just need to cut. Well, that didn't exactly work out in their favor. This is the actual statement itself. I think everybody, whenever the Fed has their meeting, don't just go to CNBC and get your data read the statement itself they're going to clip what's interesting to them but you got to read the whole thing so automatically at 2 p.m if you go to this website you will find that they have their actual statement posted there you can see it for yourself if you just go to a search engine and type in fomc statement or fomc press release you will get this to come up right away you have to look at what it said because the data here does not give reason for the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates. I mean, we have to see this and actually judge it for what it is. Yes, there's been a lot of pressure from all sides for them to do so. But when you actually look at the information here, even in this first paragraph, you're going to see for yourself. Information received since the FOMC met in June indicates that the labor market remains strong, 
right here. That's number one. The economic activity has been rising at a moderate pace. That's two. Job gains have been solid on average in recent months and the unemployment rate has remained low. There you have five different data points to suggest that everything is at least fine. No reason to cut. Maybe you wouldn't necessarily increase rates at this point because there's some scenarios outside of the United States that may spill over into the United States. However, if you're just looking at this data, you would think to yourself, okay, we'll leave it where it is and we see what happens. Instead, they go for a cut. That tells me that there's other data here that they're looking at that is actually more powerful than these points. Now, you got to look at what they say and then what they do. Two very different things. Although growth of household spending has picked up, that's another one, from earlier in the year, growth of business fixed investment has been soft. On a 12-month basis, overall inflation and inflation for the items other than food and energy are running below 2%. Not much below. And if you look at the trimmed mean PCE rate or whatever they call it that the Dallas Fed uses, it is actually currently at 2.0. So of course, they're looking at their core PCE rate and that isn't exactly up to par, up to standards with their whole, they have to create a 2% inflation for some reason, but that 2% inflation is based on what they use as a basket of items. And in fact, when you look at a different set of basket of items, then it shows 2%. It's the most confusing thing in the world. But anyway, that's what they're saying. Market-based measures of inflation, compensation remain low. Survey-based measures of longer-term inflation, expectations are a little changed. So basically what they're saying is we can cut rates right now, 25 basis points, and we don't have to worry about creating a hyperinflation. That's pretty much what they're saying at this point. And that is probably the fact that sure, 25 basis points, not going to be a problem. There's more to it though, because you're signaling something in the markets. You're signaling that you are willing to create easy money so that this system keeps moving. And the liquidity is what is the most important factor for the financial system. Without liquidity, you have an economy that will basically fall to its knees. The markets will fall to its knees. It needs this liquidity. It needs people borrowing. It needs business spending. It needs to create this and it does so by printing money. The printing press is everything and it is underlying all of which we see today. Now, they're not going to mention that. They're going to talk about all these fundamental things and meanwhile, they're printing press. They create this money out of thin air and yet they're trying to create prosperity. It never works, never will, and that's it. Okay, so further in this statement, which I do recommend that you read, they started talking about some other issues, including the fact, I'll just mention it quickly, that they are going to stop with their quantitative tightening program. Okay, I'm going to do a whole video about that and then I'm going to show you quotes that are not in this statement that were made by Jerome Powell afterwards in the press conference where he had to go and clarify his mid-cycle adjustment that didn't really benefit the market at all. They actually continued to sell off. I'm going to do another video about that because I'm going to go too long on it. So that's that for now. Let me show you what happened in the markets today. And I, I think it's important to look at the reaction from these different individuals. This here in this article out of CNBC, they are actually going into the so-called experts and what they had to say. Out of all of these, there was one individual who had some questions, and I thought it would be interesting to see that. If you want to see why the Federal Reserve is the most wonderful thing in the entire world and they can never do any wrong, you could read the other quotes that are in here, but I thought this one was very interesting. There were a couple things. First of all, you had two dissents, but they said no cut. Nobody dissented saying we should cut by 50 basis points. So that had the markets a little nervous going in. Then when Powell seemed to point out that this was mid-cycle cut, it was not the beginning of a series of cuts. People heard this as, oh my gosh, does he mean one and done? And that's when they took the market down 400 points. He walked that back at about three o'clock when he said it wouldn't necessarily 
narrowly be one and done and that gave the markets a little sense of relaxation but they're not over yet they didn't get exactly what they wanted and that nervousness is still evident in the Dow being down here where it is so I'll show you that in just a second I wanted to show you this first essentially what we have here is the markets reliance on not just easy money but easier and easier money this is insane because interest rates right now at this top level 2.25 that's the highest it will be that shows you how weak this system really is that refers back to other times when the FOMC has cut rates in the middle of a cycle and I'm contrasting it there with the beginning of a lengthy cutting cycle that is not what we're seeing now that's not our perspective now you have to look at not just the 25 basis point cut but look at the committee's actions over the year Jerome Powell said this in his press conference afterwards trying to suggest that you know let's just calm everybody down don't worry about it we're not going on either side here we are not going to spark concern at the same time we want to make sure that the market feels accommodated he's trying to really balance this out in the statement that they provide from the FOMC and then of course they don't like it because it wasn't perfect that's the way it is it's so hard for the FOMC to try to appease everybody they're never going to do that but this here just shows you the fact that we are looking at this detail today People need to understand the Federal Reserve is everything. They are everything in these markets today. There is no question about it. Take a look at what happened in the markets themselves. You can see right here, I'll get my highlighter out, and essentially what we have is everything in the red. You've probably seen it yourself. Right at the time when the meeting occurred, we saw stocks drop like a rock, okay? Because they were not getting what they wanted. They wanted 50 basis points, and they wanted to say that this was the beginning of a new cycle of monetary easing, and they were going to make sure that everything was just fine. Don't worry, we'll take care of you your 401k and your ETFs but that wasn't the case they really left those questions open for the future there wasn't really an identifiable timeline or necessarily a policy action that they were going to take in the near future so the market uncertainty was really present here today now again this could reverse tomorrow but that's what occurred today I'm simply documenting it and here you can see that it started to turn around because the markets thought to themselves well hey we got some easy money let's celebrate but then he came around to clarify the statements and you can see how that didn't really do so now obviously they're gonna have to come out in the near future maybe this week next week and they are going to have to get every former fed president and every single person that's even walked by the federal reserve buildings and they're going to get them out on the air on the mainstream media and tell them everything is just fine let me clarify this clarify that clarify this don't worry we're going to make it easy and easy and easy and that's what they want and that's what they will get you'll see how they try to calm the markets if you're interested in what changed in the new fed statement you could see that for yourself here on this page basically if you look through any of these fed statements it's quite interesting when they do this where it's very very little language that often changes and they right now are basically just getting into the most simple facts that we've covered so many times before i just wanted to give you that if you're interested number of rate cuts priced in for 2019 can you believe that they are still pricing in one and a half rate cuts for the remainder of 2019 that tells me that the market is expecting a lot between now and the end of the year we're talking several cuts here whether they are going to do this by 25 basis points 50 basis points I'm not sure that this is actually going to occur and the market is not going to like that what is very important above all is that the trade issues between China and the US has supposedly been the reason why this has been happening, okay? So between this article and this one here, I just wanted to note the fact that they have been doing these trade talks, starting them up again. Number one, the trade talks ended very, very quickly, okay? They wrapped up and they said it was productive. Of course, they always say this. And they basically agreed to the same things that they had before. Number one, 
that China was going to buy agricultural products from the United States. We already knew that. That was decided last year, a long time ago. They said that they would do that. Okay. And number two is basically the fact that the U.S. would give them a favorable terms on that deal. So that was basically what happened today in these meetings. I want to make that clear for you what has happened with the progress, but ultimately they haven't agreed on the things that they hadn't agreed on beforehand. So we are no closer to where we were, let's say a month or two ago. Okay. So I just want to show you what has happened, what is really underlying all of this. They're making that excuse, but I'm just giving you the data, giving you what you need to know. I'm going to end the video there. Make sure to watch the next video I do, because I'm going to show you the quotes that Powell made himself. I think they're really, really important. And we're going to talk about the balance sheet wind off that stopped so early, earlier than what they expected. I'm going to show you all the data that you need to know about that. So stay tuned for it. Then definitely before you go, hit the like button. I give you the information you need to know. And all I ask in return is to click one button. So thank you very much for that. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need. Get all the detail, get all the data that you need at the link in the description. Click on it and you will be brought over to Amazon where you can flip through the pages of the book for yourself. If you want the audiobook version, that's available at themoneygps.com. After I record and post that video about the Federal Reserve and their actions, I'm going to put it right here. So click on it and I will see you there.